After a major argument, my girlfriend, 45F, says I, 46M, must change my ways or she's leaving. My GF was reading an article about, that said, any man that has sex with a woman who has been drinking should be charged with rape. She wanted to know what I thought of that, and I said, I don't think it's that simple. And you can't just automatically say that any man who has sex with a woman who has been drinking is a rapist. That's absolutely ridiculous. There are too many variables to consider to make such a broad statement. As soon as the words came out of my mouth, her whole demeanor changed, and her response was dripping in condescension. Really, what other information would you need? It seems pretty clear to me. I told her that if she considered that to be clear, I'm a little worried about her sense of free thinking. For instance, the most obvious question, what if they're both drunk? How much does she need to have drunk before he becomes a rapist? What about if the situation was reversed and it was the man that had been drinking? Would that make her a rapist? What if she was the one to initiate the sex? These are all relevant questions to be answered. This is info I would expect to know before just saying a man is a rapist if he sleeps with a drunk woman. At that point, my GF became visibly angry. Her response was, If the woman has been drinking and she has even a buzz, the man is a rapist. If they're both drinking, the man is still a rapist. If she initiated the sex, the man is still a rapist. Then, in the reverse situation, the woman is the rapist? I asked. She laughed with a condescension that made my blood boil and she said, Don't be stupid. The only way a woman could rape a man is if she had a gun or something and forced him to let her shove something up his ass or something. If he gets an erection, it's not rape. Uh, I was and still am floored by her hypocrisy and ignorance. Needless to say, this argument escalated further than it should have to the point that we were actually yelling at each other. Finally, I had to just walk away. I went for a walk, and when I got back, she was sitting in the couch. Without even looking at me, she said if I don't change my way of thinking immediately, she's moving out, to which I responded, I would offer to help you pack, but you don't need a man's help with that. And I went to bed. I care about my GF, but I'm seriously put off by what a hypocrite she is, and even more so by the way she spoke to me. I don't want this to end or relationship, but I also don't want to be with someone that thinks they have the right to tell me I have to change the way I think, especially since I do not believe what I thought about the subject was wrong. In fact, I think she was wrong, but I certainly wouldn't demand that she think differently. We haven't spoke to each other in about two days, walking around the house, ignoring each other. But this morning she said to me, You know you are a rapist because we had sex the night of her best friend's wedding. We were both hammered at this wedding, and we went back to our hotel room, and she initiated some of the most wild sex we ever had. But that last statement was the last straw for me. I told her I would not ask her to change what she thinks the way she demanded I do, but if she really felt I raped her, then we are done, and she needs to move out. I'm heartbroken that this is over because I love this woman, but I also love myself enough that I won't allow anybody to tell me my thoughts are wrong, and I certainly can't live with someone who believes I rape them. Am I wrong? So I have a small update on the matter. I had the day off today, and she went to work. She sent me an email that says, I would never call the police on you because I know you never intended to rape me, and I completely forgive you. I'd even be willing to forget everything that has happened. All I ask is that you simply acknowledge that you raped me and that men who have sex with drunk women are rapists. That's all I'm asking. I did not, nor will I respond to that. Update. I received another email from my GF. In it she said, After talking to my mom and my sister, they both told me I should be ashamed of myself for even thinking that you had raped me, and I've given it some thought, and I no longer think that. I'm sorry for saying that. I know you would never do that to me. I gave some thought to it, and this time, I did respond. I said, Thank you for the apology, and your apology is accepted. Unfortunately, I still can't continue in the relationship. I'm relieved that you no longer feel that way, but it was because your mom and sister told you it was wrong. That doesn't take away from the fact you did believe it, and if they had not said what they said, or even if they agreed with you, you would still feel that way, and that is something I cannot rectify in my heart. I feel as though you are a stranger to me, and not a stranger I have any desire to get to know. Sometimes what you say cannot be fixed with, I'm sorry, this is one of those times. I wish nothing but the best for you, and I hope you find someone that will make you happy. I can't be that person.
she has not responded. But after reading all the comments of support from you guys, I realized it would be a mistake to forgive and forget. If she was capable of coming to such an ugly conclusion about me, who knows what else she could be capable of thinking where I am concerned. I'm not willing to find out. Update 2. So the GF, now XGF, which she will be referred to as from this point on, was calling me constantly over the next week. It was bordering on harassment. She would apologize over and over and say that she loved me, and no longer felt like I raped her, and she just wanted to be with me again, etc. I told her repeatedly that while I wished her no ill will, I just felt like we weren't meant to be, and she would be better off finding someone less rapey than me. Okay, I was harboring a little resentment that may have come off a tad immature at times. At one point, I told my daughter, 28F and not from the ex, everything about the breakup and what she said about me raping her at the wedding. If I may digress a little for just a moment, I would like to explain. My daughter was born when I was 17. I pretty much raised her on my own. Her mom was very flaky and was rarely around, but in all fairness, she was only 18, so she was just young and not ready for a child. Not that I was any more ready, but I knew somebody had to be the parent, so I think because we were so close in age, my daughter and I have a very close bond. We pretty much tell each other everything, and no subject is off limits. For example, I was the first person she told when she gave her first blowjob, and then again when she lost her virginity. How many daughters do that? Because we are so close, my daughter has always been very protective of me. I didn't introduce her to most of the women I dated while she was growing up, but the couple that became serious relationships she met, and let's just say she wasn't very warm and welcoming to these women, but she was older when I got with my ex, and while my daughter was not the most friendly to her upon meeting her, eventually they became pretty tight. So after telling my daughter all about it, in hindsight it may have not been the smartest move I've ever made, she became so angry that she called my ex. I didn't know she did this, nor did I condone it. But how could I be angry with her for standing up for her old man? She offered to arrange my ex's face for cheaper than a plastic surgeon would, and also to remove any teeth to prevent any toothaches she may get in the future. Although she wasn't quite that polite about it, if you smell what I'm stepping in. So my kid and I were sitting on my couch having a couple beers and shooting the shit when the cops knocked on my door. The ex called them and reported my daughter for threatening her. They charged her with a misdemeanor for the threats, but they didn't arrest her or put her in jail. Needless to say, she wanted to make a visit to my ex after that, but I was able to talk a little sense into her. Later that same night, I got another call from my ex with more of the crying and the I'm sorry's, and she wanted to just forget everything that has happened, and she no longer feels like I raped her, and she just wanted us to be together again. She asked if she could come over to talk, and she alluded to us having sex. I guess thinking I am just a dumbass man, and the offer of sex would have me forget that she accused me of rape and tried to have my daughter arrested. And yes, I know my kid should not have threatened her, but I don't care. That's my kid, and right or wrong, I've always got her back. I told the ex that I was not interested in talking, nor was I ever going to be sticking my dick in any of her holes ever again. I'm sorry for the crudeness, but that's the way I talk in real life, and especially when I'm angry. I asked her to please stop calling me and just let me live my life in peace. I hope that would be the end of it, but as we all know, hope springs eternal, but was not to be my luck. At about 3am, I awoke to something that normally I quite enjoyed waking up to, but this night I was not pleased. She had broke into my pad, well she didn't really break in. I forgot to get her key from her when she moved out so she let herself in. And knowing that I always sleep naked, she came into my room and was sucking my dick. Like I said, normally that would have been awesome, but this time I was infuriated. I started screaming at her to get the fuck out of my house before I called the cops on her like she did my daughter. It was actually the closest I've ever come to hitting a woman. I'm proud to say that I was able to hold my composure enough to keep myself from doing it, as I have taught my daughter from the time she was five years old that she never allows a man to put his hands on her more than once. If a man ever hits her, she should find a way to get away from him and come find me, and I'll take care of it from there, so I could never allow myself to be the one to hit a woman. I would never want my kid to think I was a hypocrite, and that is the only reason she didn't get punched in her teeth. She started crying and begging me to please talk to her, so I'm ashamed to say I did grab her by the arm and walk her out of my room to the front door, 
only to find some friend of hers sitting on my couch. I guess the ex's car was not running, so she got a ride from this friend. So now, I'm standing in my living room, stark naked, yelling for them to get the fuck out of my house, which woke up my daughter, who was sleeping in the spare room because she had too much to drink and I didn't want her driving. My daughter comes out of the room with a baseball bat because she didn't know who I was yelling at and she thought we were getting robbed. When she saw who I was yelling at, she actually tried going after the ex and her friend, but I was able to stop her and got her to go into the bedroom so as to not have to see her old man in that state. I ordered my ex to get the fuck out and told her I better never hear from her again. Next morning I have off from work so my daughter and I are eating breakfast and talking about going to get new locks for my house later when I get a knock at my door. My daughter answered it and lo and behold it is two detectives. My ex apparently was now trying to have me arrested for raping her. I couldn't believe it. Well, I guess I could believe it, but it was still a shock nonetheless. They said that she had called and told them she wanted to report me that I raped her and that it was regarding an incident in a hotel room after attending a wedding and they were there to ask me some questions. Now believe me when I tell you that I'm not a man that just readily cries in front of people, much less total strangers. But for some reason that I couldn't explain, I just started crying. I wasn't bawling like a little girl or anything, but there were for sure tears in my eyes, and I was unable to hold them back. Being about as embarrassed and ashamed as a man can be, I excused myself to the bathroom. I pulled myself together and washed my face. I gave myself a stern talking to about crying like a pussy in front of total strangers, and I started heading back out to the living room. I got as far as the hallway when I heard my daughter, half yelling, obviously crying herself, telling the detectives basically what a bitch my ex is, and that I didn't rape her that we were just drunk and had sex, and it was my ex that initiated it in the first place. I walked back into the living room, tears and blubbering behind me, and told my kid that I would handle my business from here and to please excuse herself to the bedroom. Once she had left the room, the female detective asked me if that was really what had happened, and I told her it was. They thanked me for my time, and they left. A few hours later, my phone rings, and it is the same female detective. She told me that they went to my exes and asked her to go further into detail about what happened. They asked her were we both drinking, and she admitted that we were. They asked her had I forced myself on her while she told me no, and surprisingly she told them no, that she was in fact the one who initiated the sex. The detective then asked her if she was the one that initiated it, then how exactly was it that she was feeling like I raped her? She said that she was drunk and a woman cannot consent to sex while she is drunk, so if a man has sex with her, then that is rape. The detective said she had to keep herself from laughing out loud she then told my ex that she didn't know where she was getting her info from, but she explained that it is illegal for somebody to have sex with another person if that person is so intoxicated that they are unconscious or just unable to effectively consent or deny consent. She said that what happened between her and I was nothing more than two people having consensual drunk sex. And if she wanted to be technical about it, since my ex is the one that initiated the sex, consent wouldn't even fall to her. It would fall to me. And so if anybody was committing rape in that situation, it would have been her, not me. But the fact is nobody raped anyone. Then the detective said my ex got huffy and asked her, how could she possibly have been the one committing rape? Since not only was I the man, but I had an erection and a man cannot be considered raped if he has an erection during the act. The detective told her that she wasn't sure where my ex was getting her information from, but that she was wrong in everything that she was saying and that she should be a little more careful about making police reports and spouting off what essentially equates to nonsense, because she could have done some serious damage to somebody else's life under the right circumstances. I cannot tell you how wonderful it was to hear all that stuff that this detective was telling me. I really wish I could have been there to see my ex's face when she was informed of all this, although I know that is just childish and petty on my part. Then the detective said something else that I was not expecting. She told me that my daughter had told her about the night before when I woke up to the ex sucking my dick. She asked me if it was true, and I said yes. The detective told me that if I wanted to, I could report that as a sexual assault, and she would be arrested. They would probably just release her on her own recognizance, but she would still have to go to court, and if found guilty, she would have to register as a sex offender. I couldn't believe it. I really thought about it, 
but I have no desire to ruin my ex's life. I just want her out of mine. But you can bet I had fun telling my ex what the detective told me, and I used it to tell my ex if she ever contacts me again that I would do it. And also, she needed to have the charges on my kid dropped. But if she did that, had the charges dropped and then never contacted me again, I would not report her for sexual assault. She agreed. And I can't be happier. Edit. A lot of you guys are saying I should press charges on her. Here is my thought on this. I love this woman, and still do to a degree. And a lot of you are saying what she did was sexual assault, and I suppose technically you could look at it like that. But I don't know that I do. Not to be crude, but this woman has given me countless blowjobs over the years. This being the one and only one that was not welcomed. But I have to ask myself if I really feel like I was sexually assaulted. And when I think of it in comparison to let's say somebody forcing themselves on my daughter, or all the other millions of women that have had and continue to have happened to them, I don't really feel like what happened is the same thing. I certainly don't feel any trauma from it, and I am not even losing any sleep over it. I get that she was willing to ruin my life by making accusations of me, but I can't justify to myself having her charged with a sexual assault when I don't feel assaulted, and I selfishly don't think I could live with myself essentially ruining her life because she was willing to do it to me. She has to live with herself knowing that she tried to do that to me. I don't want that for myself. You all have given me a lot of other reasons to consider it, and I'm doing that, but because she tried to do it first is not going to be one of the things I consider. But I do want to let you all know how much I appreciate all the sentiments of support I've been given. It means a lot, last update. I have thought a lot about this, and much to the anger of many of you. I'm sure I've decided not to press charges for SA. Maybe I'm a coward, but I just don't feel like I want to tell police or a judge, or a lawyer, or a courtroom full of strangers, or my friends and family, that I was the victim of a SA. I know many of you think I should, but I just don't want to continue with this situation looming in my life. I'm still trying to grieve the end of my relationship on top of everything else that's happened. I'm sorry to those of you who don't understand where I'm coming from. What I have done, though, is as if today, my daughter and I went, and we both filled restraining orders on her. I've blocked her and her family from being able to call, text, or email me. I changed all the locks in my house. I installed security cameras. I'm considering getting an alarm. I spoke to the HR at my job and showed them the order so now she can't call my work and try to screw with me because my work won't even take a call from her and it will be a violation of the order. I spoke to the detectives and instead of the SA, they charged her with a criminal trespassing for the break, in which is a misdemeanor only. But it's all they can do since she had a key. They said she will probably just get unsupervised probation and a small fine, but they added a report to it that says she attempted to accuse me of rape, but it was determined to be a false accusation, and no charges have been filed, so if she tried it again, she most likely wouldn't be able to do anything. And the last time I spoke to her, I told her that if she ever contacted me or my kid again, I would press charges for SA, plus, it would now be a violation of the restraining order. I know a lot of you think I'm wrong for not pressing charges for the SA, but I've given it much thought, and I feel at this time, this is what's best for me. I'm sorry for those of you disappointed in my decision.